You know you have too many books when you start just like stacking them on top of each other. I don't even know what these books are. I'm Kayla Amanda, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I want to talk about my revisions. As I said, I do suspect that there will be a number of these videos, but for this one specifically, I want to talk about things that I need to do without even rereading my manuscript. Either things that I need to do before I reread the manuscript, or things that I know will need doing once I have read the manuscript. I know that to do a good edit, you do need to reread the book, and I will, but my draft is such trash that I know some of the things I'm gonna have to tackle without even revisiting it. The first of which is my pacing biting me in the ass. One of the ways that pacing not being super intuitive for me shows up is in my overabundance of conflict. I always try to do way, way too much with my plot, and it ends up having things being rushed and cluttered and the pacing feeling weird and clunky. So in this book, at around the midpoint, I realized I had way too much climax. I had like two separate climaxes that I needed to deal with. In the version of my outline that I was writing from, Kira got kidnapped at the end. It was like this whole other thing that happened where they had to go deal with that. But there was already way too much happening in my plot, so things were getting rushed and didn't get to breathe. It also meant that I didn't really have time for Kira and Alex to learn to like each other. They meet right after she turns for the first time, and then they kind of don't have a chance to breathe at all. They don't have a chance to develop any feelings before rushing headlong into the first bit of plot. So that's something I know that I need to handle. The second half of the book, from the midpoint on, I wrote knowing that I had taken out the Kira's kidnapping plot. But Act 1 and 2A are written still thinking I'm gonna have her kidnapped. So there's a lot of things in there that I need to stretch out and give some time to breathe, and a lot of weird pacing stuff that I can just cut. I want to tackle my outline before I revisit the manuscript because when I reread it, I want to be able to do that with my changes in mind. I want to be able to focus my reading to that end as opposed to sort of aimlessly make notes about what might be nice to change. I think it'll be tighter and easier to revise. There are also a bunch of changes that I just sort of know I need to make. I have a couple of characters who I want to combine into one, and I have a character who I decided was going to be a paramedic later in the story, so I want to go back and see that earlier. I want to change who's important a little bit and make some of the characters have some more scenes with Kira. So I think what I'm going to do is just make a huge list of all of those changes that I know that I want to explore and that I know I want to change and then have that prepped for when I do reread it and see if there's any of those that I, on second thought, don't actually want to do or don't maybe need to focus on the way that I thought I had. I also want to prep some character sheets. I kept adding characters as I needed them which was fine, but because I hadn't planned on them, they didn't actually have any like concrete character description or concrete character traits. So I want to have character sheets pre-written so that every time I encounter them during my reread, I can just make notes on what I said about them in that scene and then revise their character from there and decide what I want to keep and what I want to let go. There's this couple, Lee and Theo, and they showed up in just one scene as kind of toss away characters, but then I liked them, so they kept coming back except I don't know anything about them. I know that one was a redhead, but I don't remember which one, and it would not at all surprise me if it changes between scenes. So that's the kind of thing I want to keep track of, and I think that having like pre-made sheets on hand to just note that down on will really help me out. I also think that that's probably going to be analog, like it will probably be pieces of paper. Um, I normally like to keep everything in my super secret wikias, but as I'm reading things, I find it easier to like physically take notes. It's what I did in school, and it's just what's easier for my brain to remember. I also need to revisit my spice level. There are only two sex scenes in this book, and both of them were difficult for me to write, which is not like me. If you read my fanfiction before I wiped most of it off the internet, you'll know that it was primarily just feels and fucking. So to have sex scenes be A, difficult for me to write, and B, few and far between is weird and out of character. But I think part of the problem was that pacing, right? Because my pacing didn't have any time to breathe in it, it also didn't really have time for intimacy between Kira and Alex, which is another problem that I know I have going forward. The chemistry between Kira and Alex needs some work, and it's not Kira's fault. She's strong and interesting and independent, and she just needs the support to know that if she asserts herself and she steps up for what she wants, the people who love her aren't going to push her away. But Alex is just kind of hot. Like, I get why Alex likes Kira. She is funny and smart, and she handles way more shit than people give her credit for. 
But I don't really know why Kira likes Alex. I mean, he is hot and he has that V of muscle, which we all like so much, but he doesn't have a ton of personality and the personality he does have kind of just leads into the conflict between them, which is good because they need conflict, but is also bad because he needs more than that, right? She needs to have a reason to want to be with him and to want to deal with the conflict between them. It's one of those things that's so much easier in fan fiction because I don't need to come up with it. I can just, you know, use what they've already given me in canon. I need to figure out their dynamic and start introducing it earlier so that when he starts being a jerk and she fights for what it is they have, it seems worth fighting for and you understand where she's coming from as opposed to just sort of following the plot cues. Hello, clearly there has been a costume change. Cats happened and then my roommate got home and then I accidentally rearranged my entire bedroom and now it's tomorrow. So that's what I need to do for plot and character work before I even pick up the manuscript but there's also a huge world building decision that I need to make. When I first conceived of Kira's story, I was going to have her relationship with her mountain lion shifted form be kind of like they are in the Alona Andrews Kate Daniels series, where shapeshifters essentially are the same person regardless of the form they take. There are some obvious exceptions like Derek's Wild and when shapeshifters go loop, but for the most part, shapeshifters are who they are regardless of the skin that they're wearing. However, as I wrote the story, it started to change on me, and by the end of the story, Kira had more of a symbiotic relationship with her cat. The cat was an entity of its own who had ideas and opinions and desires that were parallel to, but not exactly the same as Kira's necessarily. She was another personality who helped Kira and who was a part of Kira, but who was not Kira. It's like in the Side Changeling series by Nalini Singh, where Hawk thinks about his wolf as taking care of him and being more capable of certain things than the human side is. So I need to do some if-thans and figure out what I want to do with that world building. So that's the first group of things that I need to do before even picking up my manuscript. I want to get really clear and specific on the dynamic that I want for Kira and Alex, and part of that means getting really clear on the personality that I want him to have, and the reason why someone like Kira would want to be with someone like him. I also need to knock out a few character sheets so that I can have them on hand as I'm rereading, and I want to make that list of things that I know I need to keep an eye out on or that I know I want to change as I'm reading it. Then I need to go back to my outline and make sure that Act 1 and 2a fit with the rest of the story, which is daunting and probably the part I'm most afraid of doing, but the part that I think will be most difficult is actually figuring out that world building piece, figuring out the relationship I want the shifters to have with their shifted alter ego. Is it a part of them or is it a symbiotic identity with whom they share a body? All in all, it's a big ask. Revisions really scare me because I don't do a lot of them. I have revised books in the past, but nothing that I've revised to a point I liked it enough to keep it, so it's something that I'm not very experienced at and I'm pretty nervous about tackling. My friend Whitney says that revisions are her favorite part of the book. That she says that that's when the story comes alive for her and I'm hoping that I feel the same way. If you do like the idea of a lot of revisions videos, please let me know down below, as well as if you have anything specific you'd like to see me tackle. I have no authority or expertise to speak of, but if you want to fumble along with me, I think that would be great. I think it would be nice to have a record of this just for myself, and if you want to join me, that would make it way more fun. Of course, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Like, subscribe, do that good engagement stuff. And if you were looking for me anywhere else, I am pretty much everywhere as Kayla Amanda. That is K-A-Y-L-U-G-H-M-A-N-D-A. -A -A, and I'll see you next time. I found them when I was reorganizing my room. It's, oh, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Cemetery Moon by Beth Gualda, which is a series of angel romances by a friend of mine. I'm not normally into angels or god stuff, but uh, she makes it not annoying and the angels are hot. Uh, I particularly like the evil one, obviously. And oh, uh, The Strange and Deadly Portraits of Brian and Gray, also by a friend of mine, E. Latimer. Very good. Who doesn't love evil paintings that are trying to kill you? Oh, drinks they love. I bought it because it was $5.